In this tutorial, we look at how to analyze data using contingency tables in Stata. Specifically, we're going to check out the CS command, which is uh, the cohort study command. It's actually one of the uh, tables for epidemiologists. But uh, as biostatisticians, we're going to dip into the uh, epidemiologist tab as well and use it to estimate odds ratios and do a Pearson chi-square test. You can also conduct a Pearson chi-square test using the tabulate command, and this is useful especially when you're dealing with R by C tables. So within this tutorial, we're again going to use the CHIS health disparities data. Go ahead and open that up on your computer and we'll get started. So the goal of this tutorial, again, is to look for an association between poverty level, whether you're above or below the federal poverty level, level and whether you've visited the doctor in the last 10 years. We're looking at a sample of 500 respondents from the CHIS survey. Uh, and let's go ahead and construct a two by two table comparing poverty level versus doctor visit using the tabulate command. So again, I can just type tabulate poverty doctor and get a simple two by two table. But I can also obtain more information if I specify some options. Specifically, if I type comma row, it's gonna give me the row frequencies. So it tells me that among those above the poverty line, 18% didn't go to the doctor and 82% did in the past year. And it gives me the same thing for those below the poverty line. So that's the row option. There's also an expected option. And you can see the key up here saying exactly what state is presenting to you. So when I specify expected, what that gives me in this middle column is the expected frequency. So remember, when we're doing two by two tables const and constructing large sample tests, we need to make sure the normality assumption is valid. And we do that by looking at the expected cell counts. So expected and row are both really useful uh, options to use with tabulate. We're going to move on and we're going to go ahead and try to calculate an odds ratio in a 95% confidence interval for visiting the doctor in the past 12 months for those above and below the poverty line. The easiest way to do this in Stata is by going statistics, epidemiology and related, tables for epidemiologists, and in this case we're going to be doing a cohort study. So go to cohort study, risk ratio, etc. You can see that the command used in this situation is CS, cohort studies. The case variable in our example is going to be doctor. The exposed variable is whether or not you're above or below the poverty line. Now, if we want to get an, an odds ratio, we need to go to options. And you can see there's this, this box over here on the right that says report odds ratio. Check that box. And then if you want to get the exact same confidence interval that Marcello showed you how to calculate in the notes, you need to click on this wolf approximation as well and then hit submit. So take a minute to check, check out the structure of exactly what's given when you run this CS command. You can see we've specified the option odds ratio and wolf. So what exactly do we get? Up here we just see the standard two by two table that we got from the tabulate command. And then we also get the risk in the exposed and the unexposed. Additionally, since we're doing a cohort study, we get a risk difference. Remember, if we were doing a case control study, we wouldn't be able to calculate that risk difference. But we have a cohort study, so it gives us this risk difference and the corresponding risk ratio. But remember, what we were asked to calculate is the odds ratio. You see that we get an estimate of 0.51 and 0.28 to 0.92. But remember, what this is actually giving you, because poverty is defined as one if you're below the poverty line and defined as zero if you're above, this odds ratio, it's actually the odds ratio for those below the poverty line compared to those above. But what we're looking for is the opposite of that. We want the odds ratio for visiting the doctor in the past 12 months for those above compared to those below. And we're doing this to be consistent with the previous tutorial and because personally, I, I think it's more intuitive to interpret um, the, the odds ratio for those above versus those below. So let's go ahead and do that calculation. In order to get that, we just need to generate a new covariate called no poverty and define it as one minus poverty. So now we have this covariate, no poverty, that's defined as one if you're above the poverty line and zero if you're below. So I can rerun my CS command, but replace poverty by the name of my new covariate, which I misspelled. Okay, so you see, again, I get a two by two table. I get the same point estimates here, but they're switched now, which is good because exposed are now people who are above the poverty line. And then we get an odds ratio here of about two. So what I can say is, and again, looking at this confidence interval, I can say, 
I get an odds ratio equal to 2 with a 95% confidence interval of 1.1 to 3.5. So in conclusion, we estimate that the odds of visiting the doctor are twice as high for those above the poverty line relative to those below the poverty line. One final note, we did use the uh, Wolf approximation in class, but there are other approximations or other uh, ways that you can get a confidence interval for the odds ratio in Stata. So if you want to read, about, read more about those, you can check out the Stata manual. The next thing that we want to do is we want to conduct a Pearson chi-square test to examine whether there's an association between poverty and prior doctor visit. And we want to do this at the alpha equals 0.05 level. Now, theoretically, I could also just use my odds ratio to make inference. Remember, if one is not included in that odds ratio, that also corresponds to a hypothesis test of no association. But we were specifically asked to do a Pearson chi-square test. Fortunately, when I run this CS command, it goes ahead and it spits out for me the value of the Pearson chi-square test. So let's walk through this a little bit. When we do a Pearson chi-square test, we need to think first of all, what are our null and alternative? The null is basically no association, and the alternative is that there is an association. When I say association here, I'm talking about the association between poverty and visiting the doctor in the past 12 months. Remember, we could also frame it in terms of the odds ratio. I could say the odds ratio is equal to one, that's my null, and my alternative could be that the odds ratio is not equal to one. Now when I run the CS command, it doesn't actually give me any information about whether the normal approximation is reasonable. So I would need to go back to tabulate, and before doing the Pearson chi-square test, I need to make sure my large sample assumptions are reasonable. So we need to look at the expected cell counts by specifying expected in the tabulate command, and we need to make sure that they're all greater than five. And that's very true in this case. So we can go ahead and use our Pearson chi-square test. We see that the value of our test statistic is 5.1, and we know that this chi-squared statistic under the null hypothesis, it follows a chi-squared distribution with one degree of freedom. Using that, we can calculate the p-value, which is 0.024. Therefore, we're going to reject the null hypothesis and, and conclude that we have evidence that the odds of visiting the doctor in the past 12 months are higher in those who are above the poverty line. I could also conduct my Pearson chi-square test just simply using the tabulate command. I specified this row option and the expected option. I can just tack on chi2, C-H-I-2, and what that's going to do is give me the results of a Pearson chi-square test via the tabulate command. If I look down here at the bottom, we see that I get the exact same results as I saw using the CS command. One of the advantages to using tabulate instead of CS is that I can analyze data for R by C tables as opposed to just two by two contingency tables when I use tabulate. So let's, inst let's suppose that instead of poverty, I was interested in this race cat covariate. So I replace poverty with race cat, which is a categorical race variable. You can see it's broken up into white non-Hispanic, white Hispanic, and all other races combined. And down here, now I get the results from that Pearson square test for this uh, three by two table instead of a two by two, and you can see that now it has two degrees of freedom, I get my test statistic and my p-value again. So that's just a brief overview of if we, if we had an R by C problem, we could use tabulate to conduct the Pearson chi-squared. But let's go back to the test of no association between um, whether or not you uh, are above or below the poverty line and whether you visited the doctor in the past uh, 12 months. So we've calculated a lot of information here. We have a risk difference, and if you remember from the previous tutorial, we also got a p-value for that two-sample test of proportions, or a test that the risk difference is equal to zero. We got an odds ratio and a confidence interval for the odds ratio. We got a p-value from our Pearson chi-squared test. So we got two p-values, we got two confidence intervals. We have a lot of information here that we can work with. Now, if you were presenting all of these results in practice, what would you do? Would you just show one p-value? Would you just show the odds ratio? You know, you need to think about exactly what do you want to uh, present when you're presenting these results in practice. So the first question is, do you get the same general conclusion with each test? And here we see the positive risk difference, the risk difference that's bounded away from zero, we have an odds ratio that's bounded away from one. We have a significant p-value, and the p-value back in the uh, previous tutorial was 
also very similar to this uh, p-value. So we get very consistent conclusions between all of these uh, different techniques we've looked at, which is good. If you're not getting the same answer with all of these tests, you need to figure out why. Um, generally, they should be very consistent with each other. And then when you're presenting your results, you just have to think about, well, which do you find most useful? Which is most intuitive? If you have a cohort study and not case control not a case control study, you might want to present a risk difference because that's probably the easiest and most intuitive to interpret. Whereas if you're thinking about odds, people have to think really hard. I still have to think really hard when I'm, uh, you know, interpreting an odds ratio. So I think the the human mind is more programmed to think in terms of risk differences. But that's my personal preference. But remember from the past tutorial, don't ever just present a p-value. You know, you always want to give a p-value plus some measure of association with a confidence interval. One nice feature of Stata that allows you to uh, use a lot more functions than what are actually just built into Stata is that users have written a bunch of code that you can download just by using the command ssc install. So for instance, I want to show you how to visualize data from an R by C table. And somebody wrote a very nifty program to do that. It's called tabplot. So I would say ssc install. The name of the program is tabplot. And I believe you have to be connected to the internet to do this. Um, but what it does is it checks to see if you've got the package already installed. And then it goes ahead and it finds this source and installs it on your computer for you. But you do need internet connection. So now we've got this tab plot command. And we can visualize R by C data by using tab plot. So let's look at race cat by poverty. Now what this does is it gives us histograms, essentially, of those below and above the federal poverty line within race category. To get a different picture of the data, I could have reversed the order of the covariates. And now I see within those who are below the poverty line, I see the percentage that belong in each race category, and the same for those who are above the poverty line. So this is a really neat way to visualize data from an R by C table. We could have just typed in tabulate race cat and poverty, comma row, and this would give us the percent above and below the poverty level within the white group and the Hispanic group and the all other races group. But you can see this is a lot less uh, visually stimulating than the output that we get from the tabplot command. 